It began when an unknown man from Denmark approached me with a proposition. This is him in his tiny apartment in the outskirts of Copenhagen. If this was a piece of fiction, no one would believe that he would be meeting with North Korean arms dealers in Africa. You can walk in here, no problem. Or going to the North Korean embassy in Sweden to pick up secret documents. If something happened, our embassy does know nothing about it. Exactly. But this is no fiction. Everything you are about to see is real and has been going on for more than 10 years. This is him age 14, somewhere in Denmark. He is celebrating his birthday. Among the guests are children who grew up in the communist dictatorship East Germany. Many years later, as a grown man, he will claim that befriending these kids and learning about the horrors of a totalitarian regime made him decide to infiltrate and expose the most brutal dictatorship of all. North Korea. It's a nice explanation, if true. But exactly why he chose to place himself in mortal danger is also besides the point. What only matters here is that he is a mole. In the end, I had to hire an expert to help me sort it out. Annie Machong is a contentious figure in the intelligence world, but this does not concern me. I am only interested in her skills in debriefing agents. So, Annie, uh, the mole arrived last night, mm -hmm. and uh, soon he is ready for you. Do you have concerns? Maybe. We should discuss that after you have met the mole. Hi, Ulrich. I'm Hi. Annie. Hi, Annie. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Thank you. I used to work for the British Security Service, otherwise known as MI5, and part of my job as an intelligence officer was to debrief agents. So the film team has asked me in to debrief you about mm. your life over the last 10 years. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit more about him, his background? Um, you know, if he would rob a bank, you would not be able to describe him. Mm -hmm. um, he blends in. He blends in. Perfect. So, how did you get interested in North Korea? Oh, it's a long story. Um... It is a long story, so I will speed it up. Back in 2006, as a journalist from Denmark, I went to North Korea and shot a documentary called The Red Chapel. The regime in Pyongyang really hates my film, and because of that, I can never travel back to North Korea. Seen from a Western point of view, the film has its moments, but it does not offer up the smoking gun, the irrefutable proof that North Korea is an evil and criminal enterprise. Ever since, I have been on a quest to prove these points, yet being forever banned from the Chamber of Secrets. But back in Denmark, the man who I prefer to call The Mole saw my film, and somehow it gave him the idea that he could travel to North Korea in my place. Why not? Let, let go. And then I um, wrote an email to uh, 
Mads? Mm -hmm. Approximately 10 years ago, out of nowhere, he wrote and asked if I would be interested in doing a film about him infiltrating the Danish North Korean Friendship Association. So how old, I mean, what happened? Can you talk me through um, exactly the first steps you took in this and the sort of thought process you were going through? Uh, you mean with the Korean Friendship yes. Yeah, well, I found the Danish Friendship Association and the chairman, uh, Anders Christensen, he invited me to their first public meeting three weeks later. Mm -hmm. And he was the only person in the room when I came up um, trying to put up an old Korean uh, flag. And I went like a normal to go say hello and we'll want to shake hands. And I have such a, you know, very, it was not even a handshake. It was very like, mm. the hand slipped away. It was like, I think, okay, is this, is this a man or is he, I don't know. Jellyfish? Yeah. He was quite fast to tell people that this is a new member. Den demokratiske folkeret blev foretog i går kl. 11.57 lokalt tid sin tredje atomprøvesprængning. Sprængkraften var betydeligt kraftigere end den for, de foregående prøvesprængninger i 2006 og 9. I told him, it could be of interest if it would evolve to something of international importance. Because the Danish North Korean Friendship Association in itself is a fairly depressing group of people. Mm -hmm. He said, please uh, keep me posted if it's interesting. And I was like, okay. I also told him I will never be able to pay you any money. Um, so, so that is not of importance for him. And then he just kept on going. The mold went down the rabbit hole and discovered a bizarre world of Danish senior citizens who are true fans of North Korea. <clears throat> Slowly but surely, the mole advanced in the hierarchy and became a member of the board, working under chairman Anders Christensen, a die-hard communist. Here you have him back in his heyday, meeting with the founder of North Korea, eternal president Kim Il-sung, grandfather of the current ruler, Kim Jong-un. <laughs> All the time, the mole was filming. The excuse being that he was making movies for YouTube about his work as a board member. I'm a proud member of the board, and from here I have been fighting to defend the fantastic country of North Korea. But we need to be aware that people that today is our friend or comrades could be our biggest enemies tomorrow. There will be a fifth column of moles. We really need to be aware of that. So, how did things progress for you once you were a member and on the board? Well, my biggest wish was to visit North Korea, mm. of course. And to come there, you need to be a part of an association. The mole went to North Korea, and the North Koreans took a liking to him. His main contact person in North Korea was a man named Kang, who works for the Ministry of Cultural Affairs. Everything under control? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. All of us in Korea. Everything is in control. Kang is a key person in this tale of deceit and intrigue. We trust you and we really uh, treat you as friends, good friends. Yes. But uh, uh, you, you have to understand that uh, the place is a bit uh, sensitive and maybe uh, the spies are interested in this kind of places, yeah. uh, military uh, yeah. places. So all the Korean people, they are very alert. 
Hello. 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 Hi. Hi. Nice meeting you. Hello. Everywhere he went in North Korea, the mole was filming. Of course, he also brought his camera when he was awarded a medal, recognizing his work for the regime. OK, congratulations. So when did things really start to move? When I was in North Korea in 2012, I met a Spanish person named um, Alejandro Cardebenas. Could you confirm that this is a photograph of him? Well, that's him. Yeah? Yeah. He's the president of the Korean Friendship Association, KFA. And according himself, there are hundreds of thousands of members around the world. Amongst the friends of the regime in Pyongyang, Alejandro Cardebenas is the biggest friend. Compared to a small group such as the Danish North Korean Friendship Association, the Korean Friendship Association is the international lodge for people who consider North Korea to be heaven on earth. Alejandro Cardebenas is the founder of the Korean Friendship Association and is known around the world as the gatekeeper of North Korea. As such, Alejandro Cardebenas was my tour guide and access ticket when I traveled to North Korea back in 2006. Here, we are posing for a North Korean newspaper. Spending time with him, I found it hard to understand why Alejandro, who was born in Spain and lives in Spain, has chosen a life as a cheerleader for North Korea. According to the UN, North Korea starves, abuses and kills its own citizens on a daily basis, but Alejandro Cardebenas considers all that to be fake news. Sabe que hay informes de Naciones Unidas, de Amnistía Internacional, que son muy duros. Sí, porque se utilizan como medios. El régimen político de Corea. Son medios de propaganda. I also discovered that his preferred foods are French pastry and candies, which is, I guess, the perfect diet for a supervillain. Do you think Alejandro is dangerous? Yes, I do, especially when he's in North Korea, mm -hmm. uh, because he had the power to react to things he don't like. He's a small dictator in his own universe. Alejandro Cabo de Venos, ¿podríamos decir que es usted el único occidental que entra y sale de Corea del Norte con facilidad y que representa a Corea del Norte, el único occidental del mundo? Sí, así es, primer y único occidental. You're a Spanish aristocrat representing the North Korean regime. What's in it for you? Well, it's a long story of 30 years, but although I come from an aristocratic family, I'm just a son of a worker. So I wanted to contribute for the construction yeah. of a socialist country. And I created the Korean Friendship Association so I could facilitate the meeting and the bridge between DPRK and the rest of the countries in the world. Alejandro Cao de Venos, señor Cao de Venos, buenas noches. Lo que pretende Corea del Norte es simplemente asegurar su supervivencia y su futuro. No acá es la única forma de hacerlo, es desarrollando una disuasión nuclear. There will be no world without Korea. If North Korea is attacked nuclearly by the United States, the world will end as we know it. So you meet him in Pyongyang, and then you go back to Europe, and yeah. then your second meeting is when you go to Spain. Yeah. Hello. We are here in Barcelona in front of Hotel Astoria. We just have a wonderful meeting with um, our colleague, Ulrich, discussing matters of interest. Can you tell me a little bit about that meeting? I was in a small hotel in the outskirts of Barcelona. And we talked like two or three hours. Um, of course, a lot about North Korea. And... So I had a wonderful meeting with the good Spanish comrade Alejandro Carlos de Benas. And then he started telling me about Anas. 
Så man må sige, at han er rimelig godt inde i, hvad Anders han har foretaget sig gennem morgenen, og kan se, at Anders han ikke udvikler sig eller kommer med nye tiltag. Og det må jeg også give ham ret i. Så so what did Alejandro want from you? He, he didn't want me to um, be the um, official delegate, as they pronounce it in KFA in Denmark. Mm -hmm. Og derfor så starter jeg stille og roligt op på min egen KFA, Danmark. Øh, hvor jeg selvfølgelig bliver udnævnt af Alicanto, og jeg vil blive en af hans nærmeste, og også internationalt vil han gerne have mig til at stå for mere og skabe nogle kontakter. And so the mole began tunneling his way through the Korean Friendship Association, hoping to find the secrets of this global club for friends of Pyongyang. Long live our Supreme Commander Kim Jong-un. Then last speech, Ulrich Larsen. Ulrich, I think you had a speech on behalf of the Yeah. Mm -hmm. My name is Ulrich Larsen and I'm a new uh, new friends of KFA in Denmark, um, and I'm really happy to be here and to speak at this annual meeting. Jonas, if we film here, we just say hi. Yeah, it would be good. Just don't cover. I mean, it should be full portrait. You should not take the portraits. Okay. Alejandro, good to see you again. Thank you. Very pleased to be here. Always, you know. Yes. Thank you. Advised by me, the mole had a professional cameraman enrolled in KFA Denmark as his personal assistant. To the association, he was just a new recruit. Is Alejandro aware of the personal aspects of your life? Yeah. And I think that's one of the reasons he wants me to, because he thinks I have a lot of time to, to be the North Korean man in Scandinavia. A lot of time, because in his real life, the mole is a retired chef who lives on welfare subsidies from the government because of some sort of chronic disease which prevents him from working. He is married with children and resides in the suburbs of Copenhagen, living a seemingly normal life. As such, he is the best mole you could ever want. It's a long fight against the Danish media. Whenever they have the chance to print imperialistic propaganda... Actually, many of the persons in the KFA are unemployed. Your leader Kim Jong Il always fought the best among the, the eternal president Kim Il Sung. General Kim Jong Il, as the supreme commander of the Korean People's Army, leader Kim Il Sung had to get outside of Korea for this is hot. I think they find something unique with him because like, they feel themselves welcome. Everyone loves the cause. Exactly. <laughs> become more proud and grow more strong, you know, until we achieve the final victory. Thank you. Thank you. I am um, participating in annual meetings in the KFA around Europe. I'm calling Ulrich Larsen, our official delegate in Denmark, nuestro delegado oficial in Denmark. Esta medalla, Ulrich, please show your medal. And two years after I went the KFA delegate of Scandinavia. So he gave me four countries. That's quite a quick leap up, isn't it? It went quite fast, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so what were your responsibilities in that? He wants me, of course, to um, react to the media. Mm -hmm. If they, you know, all the lies in the team with the North Korean eyes. Uh, this is Ulrich out of Copenhagen. Here's what he had to say. In North Korea, you have many good things that you've never seen. I just came back here from from a month ago, and I I was surprised to see how um, how bright the future looks for the North Korea. So Andre, he's really picking up on that theme that Dermot had about a smear against North Korea. Well, the Jonas is making small uh, video clips, so I know we will make one, so we will put out on the Facebook, so you can all share for today.
you happen to know if he's told his wife what he was doing? I don't think so. Mm. Når man er i Nordkorea, så går folk og lugter grimt. Uh, ikke grimt på den måde, men deres parfumer, de er sådan lidt... Uh, de er meget, der er sådan meget spritet lugt. Og så var jeg så heldig at få sådan en af min far. Så jeg har gjort det lidt til en tradition, at når jeg er ude med... I det her regi, så får den lige et par sprøjt, inden jeg går ned til møde, så giver lugten mig en eller anden idé om, at nu er jeg i Nordkorea, eller i under den nordkoreanske fane. What did your wife say when you went home smelling of that strange scent? She's told another story. Mm -hmm. I couldn't tell her the truth, because then she wouldn't let me go. Hej. 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 Nå, jamen, vi er færdige for i dag, og vi er godt udkørt. Det har været lang, en lang mødedag med en masse sjove okay. informationer. Ja, okay. Hej. Og børnene er glade. Okay. Ja, ja, vi har lige været i tvivl. Ja, det er godt. Så, ja, ja. Så ja, det var godt. Ja. Yes, ja, yes. Jamen, jeg ringer. Jamen, vi snakkes ved i morgen, ikke? Eller senere. Ja, okay. Ja, det er godt. Ja. Hej. Hi. Why does Alejandro like them all? What does he see in them all? He wants me to find um, people that like to invest money in North Korea. Alejandro Cartabinas begins putting pressure on them all. He wants them to source for businessmen who will invest in North Korea. So the main part really is raising business and yeah. investment. In a debriefing filmed in Denmark back in 2013, the mole was already talking about KFA President Alejandro Cardenas wanting him to find investors. Men umiddelbart så er det taler han faktisk uden at nævne nogen, så er det tre øh, interessante investerings projekter, der er i Nordkorea. Hvilke? Det, 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 det siger han så ikke noget, men han søger bare noget kapitalsang, der hedder fra 50.000 euro op til en million euro. But investing in North Korea is tricky business, because of the tough UN sanctions leveled against the cash-starved regime. The new sanctions include a ban on exports of North Korean goods, such as machinery and electrical equipment. Since no one in the right mind would throw money at North Korea, I decided to invent a fake investor in order for the mole to find out what exactly Alejandro Cardenas had in mind. I forgot to mention there is another person involved in this. That person is Mr. James. His real name is Jim, and he was chosen by me to perform the role as Mr. James, a man of international mystery. In real life, Jim is a former member of the French Foreign Legion, who later went on to become a jet set cocaine pusher in Copenhagen. In the end, he was caught and served eight years in jail, and now works and lives as a legitimate businessman. In my mind, he was tailor-made for extreme role-playing. So I had the mole invite Alejandro to come to Oslo in Norway for a meeting with the man of his dreams, Mr. James, a dapper Scandinavian oil billionaire. So how did you set it up? At that moment, I knew James for five hours. Mm -hmm. um, I met him in the airport in the morning okay. and we, we wasn't even sitting together in the plane. I, the plan was that I should introduce Alejandro to James and mm -hmm. James to Alejandro. So we... And then just sit back and watch. Well, exactly. Yeah. What kind of investments into North Korea would President Alejandro Cardenas have on offer for Mr. James? Good. Oh, I hope it goes good. You're, you're used to it. I'm not. Oh, <laughs> Oh, well. 
I'm nervous. <laughs> Oh, hi there. Oh, wait, oh, wait, thanks. Yes. I just have to say this. Yes. Okay, thank you. Sorry for that. Okay. Pleasure to meet you. This is James. Thank you for coming. Um, thanks. See you for that. This, this is Alejandro, the, yeah. Yeah. the yeah. president of KFA. And I'm a special delegate of the government of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea in charge of international Thank relations. you very much. And I would have loved for giving you a card, but my suitcase is still in Kuala Lumpur, so I just <laughs> have my hand baggage. No but problem. by mail, I, uh, we will send it to you. No problem. Okay. Sorry, just to interrupt, but what sort of cover story had you developed for well, James? I mean, Alejandro presumably would have done some checking on the background of James. I think he really just wants things to happen, and he, he wasn't... He was thinking about having something for the Korean so he can reach an even higher level in North Korea. So he didn't need to know the name of this oil billionaire? No, I just told him actually his name was James. Huh. I, I work for an uh, investment mm -hmm. uh, family. Until now, our investment has been in oil, mm -hmm. gas, weapons, metal, pharmaceutical. Mm -hmm. But our minimum investment mm -hmm. is 50 million uh, euro. Five zero. Yeah, five zero. Because otherwise the revenue is, is not interesting. Mm. I have contacts up to our Marshal Kim Jong un, so if necessary, I can report directly to the maximum authority to our great leader Kim Jong un in the country. We are under very, very heavy sanctions, as you may know, from the United Nations, especially as forced by the United States. So we have a parallel uh, way to do things. We have uh, companies in China, in Southeast Asia, in Malaysia, and other countries for making all kinds of transactions. So they follow sanctions in the United Nations in the front of the TV, but in reality, they just look the other way. Did he discuss what types of business he would be looking for? Yeah, and it didn't take many minutes before Alejandro started talking about that they can produce anything in North Korea which he likes to call the DPR of Korea, mm -hmm. or DPRK. Mm -hmm. Our advantage, think about DPRK as the real only country in the world that we don't need to follow any rule from anyone. Whatever you do in DPRK remains in DPRK. Nobody ever can touch your accounts, your assets, even you are followed by Interpol. We are not even members of Interpol. So we can do things that no other country can do. We are developing things in uh, pharmaceutical industry that are forbidden in any other country in the world. I have a pharmaceutical company in Canada that requested me uh, that we produce something in DPRK. But this something, it's basically the same like methamphetamine. It's a methamphetamine for the drug market. So the issue is that they send me the formula or the knowledge and then I checked with our capital, of course. We have all the knowledge to produce even that. Weapons actually is our main, but the problem is weapons in the moment that you, it's a it's very, very uh, the complicated subject. But weapons, we can build submarines factories. We can build ta ta tank factories. We have, from the first screw of the tank to the last one, is made in the PRK. Missiles all made in DPRK. We sell our missiles to Iran. Iran doesn't have our technology. All the medium range, Iran only has medium range. We have intercontinental ballistic missiles that can reach any part of the world. So, we okay, have to... Okay, okay, uh, that, mm -hmm. that one we definitely have to... Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just taking note. I can facilitate you all kind of contacts directly with our state companies or any department or ministry in the country. This is no problem for me. Anytime I can issue the visas, I can prepare at all levels with all our ministers. So you, through me, you, you are right now in direct contact with the country. Meeting with President Alejandro Cautabinos in Oslo gave a whole new perspective on the Korean Friendship Association. Because officially the KFA is a peaceful organization which works to promote North Korean culture, history and values through its members in more than 30 different countries including the official delegate for all of Scandinavia, the Mole.
Was the KFA really being used as a front for dealing with weapons and drugs from North Korea with Alejandro as the spider in the web? Or was Alejandro Cautabinas playing us in order to get to the deep pockets of Mr. James? And who was Alejandro really? Simply a buffoonish braggart acting as a useful idiot for the regime in Pyongyang? Or was he a highly connected and sophisticated international criminal? At last, the mole had found his real mission and true purpose. Follow the lead of Alejandro Cautabinas and see where it takes us. So what happened after this meeting? When Alejandro came back to Spain, he was arrested okay. of uh, arms dealing. Se ha reaccionado Alejandro Cao de Venos ante las preguntas de nuestra compañera a las puertas de los juzgados. Ayer fue detenido en Tarragona en una operación policial contra el tráfico de armas. No respondo a tres minutos. Por algún motivo en este... Sí, porque son difamadores. Eso es falso. Falso totalmente. Son difamadores. Esto es falso. Total. For the first time ever, the brave soldiers of the KFA would have their annual meeting without their president. A perfect chance for the mole to rise in the ranks. I'd like to welcome you all to 2016's International KFA Conference. Over the years, our organizations have been viciously attacked by reactionaries. This year's worst attack is towards our president Alejandro. The Spanish fascist authorities are not letting him leave the country restricting his uh, movement of freedom and um, accusing him of a crime he had not committed. Maybe one day they will understand that we're right and that they are wrong, but until then, keep on with a good job, comrades. Thank you. If it was not for Comrade Alejandro, I would not be standing here today. I commend him for constantly believing in me, supporting me and guiding me. In the future, I foresee more people of the West, just like me, will realize that they live inside a broken and evil system. And so they will open their eyes and see what I see, a dream which can come true. Long live our Supreme General Kim Jong-un, Korea is one. Thank you very much. Alejandro, it's Ulrich. Whatever I can do to help you in KFA, just let me know. I'm, I'm, I will be there. Thank you. You, are, we always really crack on with you and trust all your work and your activity. So it's uh, not only me, of course, my comrades in Pyongyang. Yeah. There's no, we don't have very close friends like you. We are only a few that really, really oh, thank close you friends much. of the country. I feel the same back. I, I love you all in KFA. Next, the Mole and Mr. James went to Madrid in Spain to meet with Alejandro Cao de Binas. Through me, Mr. James had an order ready for North Korean weapons as well as methamphetamine. Would the president of the Korean Friendship Association be open for business now that he was being investigated for arms trafficking? Okay. <laughs> I can see you. Oh, hello. <laughs> so, Alejandro took James entirely on trust on your recommendation. We need to put up a story. How I know James. And, and what was that story? I'm educated as a chef mm -hmm. and um, been making food for some people where James went sending. And he just asked me if I can cook for him because he has a lot of parties and. So it's quite easy to, to get into mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. Always busy. I haven't seen him long time only, you know, short telephone, email, and he don't reply email. Hey, my oh, friend. Once again. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you. I'm very easy. I'm sorry. We... Oh. Sit down. See. Si. 
I continuously follow by different secret services from different countries. So they retain my passport. The order of the judge is that I cannot leave the Spanish territory because I had weapons. I had machine guns and I had uh, guns at home. And I, I always liked uh, uh, all kinds of weapons and practice. Who doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> So at this meeting in Madrid, yeah. does James give any ideas about why he wants, why he's interested in buying this sort of materiel? Well, he likes to um, to sell the weapons to the um, enemy of Israel, which make Alejandro quite happy. Basically, it's the weapon mm -hmm. we're very, very yeah. interesting in. Hitting Israel is a way to say fuck you, USA. Yeah. Yes. We need to sit down with the right people straight away. Yes. Sure. Our uh, army, they are used to sell Finnish technology to governments. So it's going to be complicated to negotiate the sale of whatever uh, short or medium range missiles with a private person. But talking about chemistry and components that you need, that's more easy. Because kind of we are providing technology and we are providing you with experts that you rent, but we are not selling the Finnish. Ah, okay, so, okay, that's fine for me. Well, I can guarantee you that uh, you will have the meetings with the right people and that it is possible to bring those scientists, let's call them, overseas. But of course, the terms of negotiation is something you have to arrange. But actually, you are being received by my closest comrade and he knows what you are going to be discussing about. He knows him also, Ori Tongji, because he's Kang Hyung Yu. So Mr. Kang Hyung Yu, he will be waiting for you in the airport and arrange everything to talk with the right people. From now on, we are, we, we, we are on thin ice. Yes. We, we have to be very careful. Yes. But that said, there's a lot of money to be made. <laughs> At this point, he's stuck in Spain. Yeah. For legal reasons. Yeah. But he can organize your trip with James to yeah. North Korea. We agreed to go to North Korea in mm -hmm. January 2017. Okay. Going on a secret mission to North Korea calls for careful planning. So I had my first in-person meeting with the Mole and Mr. James together, making sure that Mr. James especially knew the most important rules of the game. Let's start with this in heat banale, but it's important to have gaver with. And one of the best things you can give North Korea is his secret. Jeg vil sige, tag mindst en flaske konjak med hver. Noget andet, som er vigtigt i Nordkorea, aldrig lave sjov med den store leder, den kære leder eller nogen generelt. Ingen, ingen af kimmerne må man lave sjov med. Man vil helt sikkert være i situationer, hvor man har lyst til at komme med en morsom bemærkning. Det skal man bare ikke. Don't go there. Okay. Noget tredje er, øh, det er en meget militariseret kultur, og det er en meget alkoholiseret kultur. Der, der er næppe et land i verden, hvor de drikker så meget som i Nordkorea. Hvis man er dårlig til at drikke, hvad skal man sige, mister selvkontrollen, når man bliver fuld, skal man ikke tage til Nordkorea. Aldrig skjulte optagelser. Aldrig falde for fristelsen til at, at forsøge at lave noget i det skjulte. Jo mindre I fremprovokerer noget, jo bedre. Jo mere de kommer til jer, jo bedre. Det er jo ikke mig, der skal købe noget. Det er dem, der skal sælge noget. Lige præcis. Hi Jim, I'm Annie. Pleasure to meet you. Lovely to meet you too. If we could keep the answers as brief as possible and as precise as possible, that would be appreciated. Sure. So, what was your perception of the possible risk at this point? Yeah, I mean, as a former criminal, you don't calculate with risk that high. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I think I actually was more worried for, for Ulrich than for myself, because he invo was involved or is involved in another way than I was. I was hired in as an actor. I was also worried for the mole. Mr. James had been around the block. He could fend for himself. But what about the mole? He was just a retired chef.
So I took him to see a teacher who could give him a crash course in what is known as tradecraft among spies. In short, I took him to see Max, a former CIA agent. He makes a mistake, he could find himself tied up in the center of town with a blowtorch as an example for nobody else to do that. So. But why trust a former CIA agent with the identity and secrets of the mole? It's a good question. Max had been fired from the Central Intelligence Agency and was not in good standing with the company anymore, which made it safer to trust him. I'm going to kill you. Why? OK, yep. Anyway, I was in need of someone who could teach the mole the ropes before he returned to North Korea. If somebody's holding a gun on you, you're not going to expect them to take it away, exactly. all right? All you're looking for is a split-second edge. And besides, as the saying goes, who can you trust these days? Observation skills. But I say what's common is common, yeah. and what ain't, ain't. That means if it's common, that's usual for the area, OK, that's normal. If something stands out, it stands out for a reason. So you've got to be aware of your surroundings. You might as well give them your phone and say, here, look at it, because that's how easy it is nowadays. You have to assume they can read all of your messages. So when they look at your emails accounts, and they can go way, 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 way back, they're going to feel like you betrayed them. You didn't really believe in in socialism or communism. You didn't really believe in North Korea as a place to go. You didn't really believe in it. That was all just, you were a mole. Be careful that they don't set a trap for you. So like when they walk out of the room and leave papers, don't touch them, don't go near them. Then they can say, oh, we knew he was gonna go through these. You don't care about those. Don't even think about messing with that. I tell you what, you are a hero of mine doing this. It's very dangerous. So this is the real deal. Yeah. Safe journey. Thank Safe you, journey. Max. Godspeed. Thank you. Bye. Bye now. Right in the middle of these anxieties, an American university student was arrested in North Korea. His son was sentenced to hard labor for stealing a propaganda poster. The warm beer. His crime was simply stealing a poster from his hotel in Pyongyang. Another American front and center in Pyongyang's propaganda parade. I entirely thank you for the government of the DPR Korea for your forgiveness. Please. Otto Frederick Warmbier, a University of Virginia business major, making a dramatic, emotional confession. Please save this poor, innocent scapegoat. Think of my family. Warmbier's parents issued a statement saying they were So can you tell me what happened when you got there? We were landing in a brand new airport in Pyongyang, three steps out of the flight. We were put to side because I had the camera. This officer, he was like, because of the camera, he needs to call his um, the high-ranking officer to check that out. When we landed there, two government officials came, took my suitcase off the table. We went all the way around and they put me in the VIP lounge where the main man himself, when he travels, sits. And then we've been waiting five minutes, and Kang said, do you have your medal on? Show him. Is that? That is Mr. Kang. OK. 
And I was like taking off my jacket, and he was like, oh, sorry, mm -hmm. please, welcome to North Korea. And I just took all my equipment without any check and, and, and walked straight out for a waiting Mercedes Benz to pick us up. first evening, I had a great dinner with a lot of alcohol. I went up earlier than James to my room, and Kang then came up to my room and asked me, are, are you sure that this man has mm -hmm. all the money that he's talking about? So how did um, the deal progress once you were there? Well, in the beginning, it was just sightseeing and looking at houses and business centers. Kang, could you tell shortly where we are going? Uh, now we are going to visit the uh, Science and Technology Complex, which was uh, inaugurated uh, last year. At this point, I didn't see anything close to everything I was promised. So how long did this, um, should we call it a courtship period I think last? Two days. Two days. And then it's starting okay. getting serious. Certainly, the third morning we got picked up. We were looking at each other, like, okay, is this another sightseeing or what? When we are in the car, he said, we're going to meet some people that can sort you out. All the time we've been in North Korea, we've been driving downtown. Now we're starting driving outside town. And then suddenly we take a left turn. And now it's not in a place where you want to show tourists. And they drove us outside of Pyongyang into a slum area. So the driver park. This doesn't seem right, but I mean, nowhere to run. So I'm just like, OK, just focus. and they want us to walk down in a basement. Uh, I'm walking down this uh, stairs, and it was really creepy. 
But then a big door opened and we came into this luxury conference room with a big table with a lot of food and... And suddenly we are in a really, really nice restaurant. Under a basement yeah, in, in a, a very, rotting house. Yeah. Were you frightened? I try not to be. Then we found out we were sitting together with the, the president from the arms factory. Is this when this photograph was taken? Yes. That's so can project. you tell me who is who? This is the, um, the president of the arms factory. Mm -hmm. This one is the intelligence officer. Mm -hmm. His English was really good. His questions was definitely different of the other, and he kind of started interrogating me. Mm. And it's in that time I have to come up with a company name because we didn't have a company name at that time. Okay. So he says, what's your company name? I said, the one who's taking care of this is Target Group. <laughs> I was like, please remember that name. <laughs> then there was one we refer to as Stoneface. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 I, I, I... Then they surprised us by taking up the catalog of their weapon systems. And I was like, okay. They give me pictures. They say, this is what we can sort you out with. Like a sort of menu? Yeah. Okay. And what sort of weapons are we talking about? All kinds of weapons. Missiles. Really big missiles. Tanks. So this is all on offer? Yeah, this is what we were just handed over at the table in. Wow, so we've got Scud missiles. Yeah. So you can get five Scud missiles for $14 million. Missile launchers? Yeah. So we're going up to Scud E missiles now. Yeah. Good God, 25 million. 1,350 kilometers range. Yeah. That's practically enough for North Korea to Japan. And that's... High explosive warhead, and that's thermobaric. Yeah. Oof. I mean, that's as close as you can get to a nuke. Yeah. Without it being a nuke. What's this? Uh, this is the uh, agreement between uh, James and, mm -hmm. and Maria. The, the arms also. factory, yeah. yeah. Okay. All signed and sealed as well. Yes. And what was Ulrich doing during this meeting when you were signing contracts? He was filming. He was allowed to film? See, this is the funny part, because Ulrich's position is so well that they just thought he filmed for propaganda videos. Should I sign the Korean one as well? Yes. And, and where's that? At this point, you're in a secret underground lair in North Korea, facilitating the signature of a weapons contract. What is going through your head at this stage? Many things. First of all, I've been practically lying for my wife for seven years. So I was thinking about that. And Alejandro is aware of all of this. He's aware of everything. Mm -hmm. And I will soon go to Spain to visit Alejandro Donkey and give him a detailed report about what we achieved here together with James. Score! 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 Good, thank you. So we agreed on building a factory outside North Korea. 
that would uh, make weapons and methamphetamine. <laughs> and as is custom for them, they suggest it will definitely be underground. And did the Koreans have any preferences when it came to countries or suggestions? The first destination that came up was Namibia, mm -hmm. where they had uh, friendly people in the government. That was taken off the table due to the sanctions. So the next country that was put on the table was um, Uganda. So to sum it up, you are now a North Korean weapons dealer and broker. Yes. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a Monday night. And we begin with late developments today, the worsening horror for a mother and father from Ohio. Their son, who was just returned from North Korea with severe brain damage, has now died. Since the moment their son was sentenced to hard labor for stealing a propaganda poster, the warm beers were fighting until he was released. The look in his eyes, which I didn't know he was blind at the time, was absolute horror. Horror, like he'd seen the devil, and he had. He was with the devil. Jamen, så starter vi vel med at sige velkommen tilbage. Mange tak. Tak. Back in Copenhagen, I was shocked to discover what my two proxies had accomplished in Pyongyang. They had brought real raw intelligence with them. As the scholar Andrea Berger writes in her study, Target Markets, very little is known about pricing on North Korean weapon systems. But here was a fully detailed menu in hard copy. Mr. James being appointed as a North Korean arms broker seemed like the figment of a sick mind, but here also was a signed and sealed contract drawn up in English by the North Koreans. Before Mr. James came along, only a few non-Koreans had been known to broker weapons for the regime in Pyongyang. Back in 2011, the British arms dealer Michael Ranger was arrested for brokering a deal between Azerbaijan and North Korea, but he was a highly experienced arms dealer in a dangerous game for experts, let alone amateurs. Nevertheless, Mr. James and the Mole had scored a jackpot. I was brought to, or found a position. I have the title of Honorary Position of Business Agent for Narea Trading Cooperation. This title will I then bring to my dear friend Alejandro, for we have agreed in Korea that I will meet with Alejandro and prepare a report about the visit. Hello, Hello, good How are you? Perfect. Welcome to the bunker. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the bunker. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> it's hot here. We have minus 21 in Pyongyang when we were there. Oh, really? To prepare the mole for his next mission, Alejandro would now provide guidance on how to operate as a businessman in Uganda. In Africa, nobody is going to take care of you. No. The life of James, your life, my life, is worth 50 US dollars. Okay. That's what it costs to hire a hitman, a hitman and, and cut your throat. Literally cut your throat. And don't forget that they are quite strong because yeah. they work all the day under the yeah. sun, yeah. Huh? Yeah. taking the bush and everything. So yeah. the Negro has that thing. Okay. In the moment that you don't look at them, they will steal you. Okay. Everything, even a drop of water. And they need always to have the person on top of them telling them what they have to do. Okay. If not, they just sleep or steal. Sleep yeah. or steal. If the white master is not there, they will feel like animals and start destroying, taking all. Okay. Hmm? So actually he needs to be really, really careful of who to bring in. Yes, okay. yes. Very careful and if one person is going to appoint it, there has to, has to be the person, okay. frankly speaking, willing to die for. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what's yeah. the idea of <clears throat> the making idea the is front? To make the um, yes. methamphetamine mm -hmm. and what weapons? Mm -hmm. When talking about the business, do never use again that word, okay? 
I don't know if I think you should take care. Suddenly, he just stood up and said he wants to show me something. This is a bug detector. It will detect any kind of the of bugs that you may carry in oh. your body or someone okay. may have put to you. Okay. If you yeah. had a micro or something in you, oh, okay. it will make the signal. Okay. Okay. Ah, okay. Oh, okay. Perfect. You were mic'd up. I was mic'd yeah. up. Yeah. Okay. Try my phone. Ah, okay. Here's a signal. Up here, maybe. <laughs> you have something, air area, radio frequency? I have the car key for rent a car. I have a small uh, bag on the table, mm -hmm. so I have a car key in. Maybe it's because it takes some signals down. This is by remote control. Okay. So it was sending the signal okay. to that. Okay. okay. But this is, I sweep it many times. We don't okay. have anything please, here. Please, because uh, do that every time before we come. Yes, yes. Okay. So when talking about the business, you have to find two words yeah. to talk about two things. Yeah. Do never use again that words that you used before, okay? Mm -hmm. So we should talk about the can seafood yeah for example yeah when referring to something that you eat yeah. it's a seafood yeah can seafood yeah and when you are talking about the other thing you can talking about for example let's talk about wood wood uh, wood. wood handicraft wood hand. yeah made by hand by the native people yeah. yeah okay so in this way they never can figure out what you are talking about I've but this kind of measures is yeah. essential yeah. You are not talking a small thing. If this no. goes down, there are many millions going down. Yeah. So also James has to understand this is not a child game. No, I said I also I said to him, listen. To be serious. Yes. Because it's as easy as I do like yeah. this to you. Yeah. I can put a mic. Yeah. Oh and yeah, you can. Hey, yeah. Just hey, hello, welcome to Barcelona. And then, and then yeah. you don't, you don't have no idea that you are broadcasting information. It's good. We need that. Hmm? Spe need, especially. I, I will. Especially the, the good one. The good one. The good Russian one. This is just basic. Mm. All right. So that's all. No, we discussed yeah. all the issues. Yeah. to feel bad. I have a lot of pictures on my mind and it's like I just, now I just need to have this off because it did something to me. It's like this was a close call. So, just to be fully clear here, he was fully briefed on the plans to build this secret factory in Uganda. I love the idea. Okay. Yeah. In Uganda, Mr. James would be the playmaker. Yeah, okay. And to have it all on camera, okay. he brought a photographer who was filming for a corporate video about his life as a man of international mystery. And the mole, he brought his hidden camera. Where's the button on the top? The top thing. He's up on the side. There. Yes. Yes, there's red. We see. So what happens next? Then the North Korean arrives to Kambala. Ah, you there? Oh, good to see you again. Morning. 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 Nice to see yeah. you. Morning. One of them, nice he was one of the people in the basement while I was signing. Is that? Yeah, that's the person we named Stoneface. And who is he? That's uh, Mr. Danny, the international arms dealer from North Korea. Mm -hmm. 
Please come in. Oh, you can you can walk in. Yeah, no problem. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And I think that Mr. James will come shortly, so <laughs> then we can talk a little ourselves. <laughs> so. Earlier this month, North Korea threatened to fire missiles towards the U.S. territory of Guam. This provoked the U.S. president into threats of war. I read in the news that, um, that the DPRK had a successful missile test this morning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have any concerns, <laughs> but, but I just think with this president, Donald Trump, he's, he's a crazy man. Well, what, what did he say? North Korea best not make any more threats to the United States. They will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. <laughs> we are continuing to the launch missile until the American and the hostile country stop to okay. you know, the provoca provocate our country. Mm. There you are. Oh, hey. <laughs> nice oh, to hi. see you. Good. <laughs> 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 uh, great to see you. Two seconds, just close here. The idea was to buy an island and build a weapon factory underground. So I've been looking at an island. Yeah, yeah. This island is perfect. It's in the middle of Victoria Lake. Mm. So if airplane comes down, people on the mainland would not even see. Souvenir. <laughs> we went there to check out the island. How would you find the island in the first place? Oh. Google. <laughs> I found a place where you can buy private islands. And I could get it for $5 million. This, this idea is a very good idea. We construct the factory building. And then after that, we must provide some uh, equipment. Yeah, but equipment depends on the product. So you purchase from the from us. First, we can do, for example, the missiles or the several kinds of missiles. Yeah. So you bring your own uh, aircraft to our country by under the name of the humanitarian aid. Yeah? Yes. You can bring some, you know, the clothing, some food, and then we can load all the contractor items. And then you pay money for us, and then you fly back. We can provide you everything, from small ammunition to the big stuff, as well as electro warrior item also. Radar, all the communication system, everything you can do. So we wanted to go out and see if it could actually be used for the purpose. Mm -hmm. And before we went there, the real estate man on it, he said that he had told the people on the island, because the lip people on the island, that we were there to build a hospital. So the whole village mm -hmm. is there to welcome us. What I was saying to introduce you as a friendly party to the people on the island because we don't want them to know that it is a transaction that is going on between the landlord and us. And, and, and this is why you told them that uh, I was there to build a hospital? Yes, yes, yes. hospital. Okay, okay, yes. I see. So I need your cooperation. 
Eh? Yeah. Okay. Now let us pray. I bless these people in Jesus' name. We want to thank you for bringing us. This guy, he'd say to me, I have told people on the island you're going to build a hospital. <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> I don't look like a hospital guy. <laughs> My duty is to remove those people on the land without causing friction. Okay. Yeah. And how fast can we uh, have them move? Maximum is four months. That is included in the price, right? Uh, yeah. It's good. Now, so this is where they play football. Yeah. I think there could be a great landing field here. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, 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 yes. Very much. So. Okay. okay, perfect. Perfect. Okay, that, that is good. Yeah, that is good. But now situation, now America, what's our country? American the intelligence the agency, they should not know about this. So the idea is. And this is their idea to build a hotel above, some kind of resort. And that can explain why we have a landing ground there. Everything else will be built on underground. Now I'll show you one on the other side, and then we are done. Then you, you have an idea of all the things. Yeah. Did you get an impression that they had something out of the box? So they've done this before. And they had a standard plan, a standard look for disguising these sort of facilities. They worked with other people like this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they already said that. We have the engineer, we have the knowledge. It was not a discussion about, I should come up with those ideas. Mm -hmm. It's good. Because from the beginning, I'm an investor. Mm -hmm. I invested it. I think it's a good idea. But the architect about the whole structure with them, Bye-bye. I was feeling really bad when we left the island. There lived thousands on this island. Thousands and thousands, they're willing to throw off the island in four months if I put down $5 million. How can that be done? Was the government involved? We had a sit-down established by the broker with government officials. Mm -hmm. I was quite open. I say, we want to do something on the island. I cannot tell you what it is, but we want 100% privacy. We don't want any interference. And I want that, otherwise we don't want to buy the island. If this fly, we can move very fast. We can get the people out of the island and we can start uh, doing this. So, sure. how does that sound? That sounds uh, very interesting. I've been up with the government for the last 15 years. What is the project about? It's going to be a golf resort, a marina, it's going to be a, a, a health, health spa. We still want to give back society. We have CSR obligations. Then we buy some schools or, or something like that. Okay. We want clearance that we can land planes and take them off from our island. That, the, the aerodrome license can be, as long as it's part of the investment plan. This bag looks like. That's sweet music to our ears. Yes, that's exactly That's what, what I do. <laughs> Give me an amen. <laughs> amen, brother. We was really crazy as well. We actually got promised that they could actually uh, had custom protect our island. Just can we pray together? Heavenly Father, bless our project, bless our ideas. Amen. 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 That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> so although the true purpose of the project was not revealed to the Africans, buying the island in Uganda and using it for a secret weapons and drug factory seemed to be right up the alley of the North Koreans which was kind of important to prove. But it did not stop there, because while in Uganda, the North Korean arms dealer, Mr. Denny, was ready to take the joint venture a step further. When will you be there? OK, I look forward to see you. Take care. Bye-bye. You 
said you had uh, some things you needed to move as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, for example, before I talked to the Middle East country, the destination was Syria. Mm. Syria. Syria. For what kind of items they they want the project uh, bomb? Mm. Something like that. Okay. If you if you if can do you have the capability to transport all items from our countries to the city, and you keep the signal and then I'll go to Beijing. We can be discuss more detail. North Koreans needing to move armaments to Syria is actually a very interesting piece of information. So please allow me to digress a little bit. Historically, North Korea and Syria have been friends for many years, and the North Koreans were even building a nuclear reactor in the Syrian desert until the Israelis decided to blow it up. During the civil war in Syria, the New York Times published a story about how North Korea was helping the Syrian regime with its chemical weapons program. At the same time, small arms from North Korea have been found in the hands of fighters from the Islamic State. But most likely, these weapons were stolen from the Syrian army. So, when the North Korean arms dealer, Mr. Dani, wants to send bombs and projectiles to Syria, the end user is probably the Syrian regime. So what did you say to Dani when he suggested that you help with the Syria war? Something I still feel bad about is sending Mr. James to Beijing to meet with North Korean arms dealers. People who are in the know about the dark side advised us strongly against it. Because if the Chinese intelligence service would shine their lights on Mr. James, it would be another ball game entirely. But Mr. James is a man who craves action and I am a filmmaker who craves sensation so he went anyway. Before I'm going to Beijing, I've been in contact with Mr. Danny, who say he had passed it on to his collaboration partner, and uh, he will take it forward. Sit down, and as custom, I brought you something from Denmark. Wow. One oh, for you and, and one for you. It's, very it's the first day. There's only two gentlemen arriving. And one of them introduced himself to be the main guy of the weapon industry. Both men are North Korean. I know this because sometimes they speak Korean to each other in the dialect of the North. <laughs> Clearly, the two men are in the know about the island in Uganda, which seems to be a top priority. But can they trust Mr. James? I don't know if I can has already talked to you about the business we are doing. You work right now? A business, OK. Yeah. He said to me, we have a collaboration with Syria, mm -hmm. but our problem is to give them the armory. Okay. Do you think you can help us? Is, is that correct? Yeah, Syria. You have contacts in Syria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you give me a list yeah. of the people that you officially not can contact, then I can contact them because I can travel here and there on behalf of you. The man is smoking here? No? Outside? I don't know. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I go to the toilet. Which one is the toilet? The toilet is out there. And um, no. <laughs> no. It's uh, in there. Okay. Asking for names of clients and contacts in the world of arms dealing seems to be a showstopper.
우리가 다 죽이는 사진 그런 거들어 지금 저만 벌써 얼마 때 지금도 복도 있는 사람이다. 아니. Actually, I was kind of, kind of sad when I was in North Korea. It was in January, so it was very. Don't change the square. Yeah. Don't make the square. Yes, I have. When? In January. I was away. Yeah. Who invited you? Eh, uh, Kang. Mr. Kang. Yeah. The second day, we're meeting. Then suddenly, the one referred to as Stoneface appears. And what was the power dynamic between these two? Yeah, let me see. This is the whole strange thing, because the hierarchy is very difficult. Good to see you again. <laughs> was the enigmatic Stoneface summoned to Beijing in order to verify the identity of Mr. James. He never says a word, he does not even smile, so we can never know for sure about Stoneface. But it is safe to say that his appearance made a difference. We should check everything very carefully, very carefully. Even these words have ears and eyes, you know. Yeah. We are looking for the right person who's handling it means for transportation, for, for example. This one, hmm? Grateful. Gun. Air to air missiles. At this moment, we are saying the control by the country and uh, they are waiting for send by this one. Are you confirmed you buy the island within two, three days, three months? Are you well, confirmed? What I will do is that I will fly down there personally and stay down there until it's bought. The, the only reason why I went to Uganda in the first place was because you told me to. Huh? Head of Chamber of Uganda lawyer, my close partner. So if you need, I'll help you. Okay. This, please consider their ways of life and their ways of skills, the working style is quite different, you and us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, tomorrow I forgot. <laughs> I expect that it will be So when did they contact you again? They actually went a long time. Hmm. Over a year. My actor, Mr. James, seemed to be taking on a life of his own. That was a concern. Another concern was the mole going back to Spain to brief Alejandro Cao de Pinas about the tourist project, the codename chosen, for the underground weapons and drugs factory in Uganda. By now, the mole had been undercover for more than seven years, and paranoia was running high. For Cao de Pinas, we had to consider the possibility that he was being followed by spooks. At the same time, we also had to consider the risk that Alejandro would upgrade his counter surveillance with new devices for discovering microphones. From now on, the mole would only meet with Alejandro in a hotel chosen by us, with security on standby next door, in case his cover was blown. <laughs> Soon, Alejandro would spring another surprise on the mole, but first, a piece of nostalgia. You see, going to North Korea with Alejandro as my tour guide back in 2006 left a long-lasting impression on me. Apparently, I had also left a long-lasting impression on Alejandro Cao de Binos, and so had my first documentary about North Korea, The Red Chapel. The film stars two Danish-Korean comedians who go to Pyongyang and lampoon the leadership, which means that I am not Mr. Popular in North Korea anymore. Hello, Mr. Pyongyang. 
it's, it's poetry about the independence mm. of the cat. A little pushy cat. A, a little pushy, pushy, that what yes, does it a, a cat, a cat. Pushy, or uh, with... Uh, no, a uh, cat. In English, you can say pushy cat or cat. It's, it's you know, a cat. Pushy. Meow. Meow, pushy, pushy, yes. what does it mean? Mats Bruger, I still have this passport, you know? Bruger and the other fucker. Yeah. First trip, it's by me. They come to me. They were there more than one? Yes, they have been three times before making red chapel to North Korea. Suddenly, I received a call from Pyongyang. Alejandro, you know what happened in the red chapel? I know nothing. I was not in the meetings. No. I only brought them in the first trip. Yeah, I, I don't even know that they come second time, third time. I said, you know what? You deserve that. I said to them, for not telling me. They took advantage of you, they cheat you, they fuck you, and now they are making a fortune fix. And then you, if you were winning, you could have stopped it. Of course, yeah. I know sarcasm. I know how they think. Yeah. In the moment that they say, pussy, pussy cat, I will say to him, him, I will smash the face of Bruger yeah. and put him in the mine. Yeah. And he will smash his face in North Korea because he cannot prosecute me because he's under the laws of the country. Yeah. So I will do that. Mm -hmm. What the fuck? Anyway. Sarcasm aside, Alejandro Caute Benos is a man who thinks big. During the meeting in Barcelona, Alejandro tells the mole of an ambitious plan for a triangle deal involving Mr. James, North Korea, and a Jordanian businessman. This is Hisham al Tasuki from Jordan, who wants to provide uh, fuel to North Korea. And Alejandro gets this wise idea that we can make a triangle deal. Which, so, is? which is that we send the fuel to North Korea and James get the payment in the arms part and pharmaceutical parts to the island in mm -hmm. Uganda. The general idea is that, that so you make, we can triangle. Exactly. And no one will ever know where. Okay, now I get it. I understand, no? If the mole could get Mr. James to Spain, Alejandro will introduce him to his plans for triangular trading. So we set up the meeting in a yard in the harbor of Barcelona. Hello, my friend. Long time no see. I must say that. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Oh, be careful. <laughs> good to see you. Very really young, younger and younger. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying my best. Normally I don't drink, but today I would like a... Can you make me one of these? Yeah, sure. Bloody Mary is good. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start first by the triangle. Yeah, <clears throat> so the concept is very easy. When we were looking for oil due to the sanctions, I received the order from Pyongyang, from our government, to look for different sources. Someone willing to sell oil for, to us that doesn't mind sanctions. So this is a deal that our company, Narae, wanted to do with Mr. Dasuki. Mr. Kang told me, look, we are also doing the business at the same time with Mr. James. So why don't we make a triangle, you instead of you paying to our country, which is a little complicated because as you know, the sanctions and so on, and the nature of the business especially. So instead of going direct, why don't James pay? Like you are buying the oil, let's say, you are buying this oil, not the DPRK, although we are the one receiving. And then from this amount, then can be deducted from the contract and for the operations that you are going to realize in the tourist business. So we will receive uh, the weapons, mm -hmm. and then we give him money, and then he gives oil. Excellent. And he don't have a problem with selling oil to NK? Not at all. So, so he knows how to, to get the oil there without getting the boat stuck? Exactly, yes. So it's kind of pirate? Yes, yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Um, what is what, what, what is your position in all this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the person that makes the things work. Let's say like that, okay? Like a person that is uh, arranging everything at international level. Okay, matchmaker. 
they could say us. <laughs> <laughs> we could say that normally most things come through me. I'm in the middle of many, many of the most important transactions of our country. And uh, I hold positions, which I cannot tell you in our country, but a very high level in the ministries, okay? It's a ministry that is over all the ministries. So an agreement like this, you can sign on their behalf. Sure, exactly. Uh, and, 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 and guarantee my security. Uh, yeah, exactly. Okay, let's see. They just think I will hand over money. And I'm like, I'm not handing over any money. I, I have met you, I have trust in you, but I want to meet this Mr. Dasugi <laughs> face to face. So my two proxies, the Mole and Mr. James, went to Jordan to find out if there really is a man named Al Dasugi who wants to triangle with them and North Korea. And we decided to meet up the next day for signing mm -hmm. the contracts. Mm -hmm. Nice to see you again, my see friend. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, uh, this is Vladivostok, you go out, 
international, and you go back to Nanpu or something with another vessel, or just change the name? Also, have to be at least some time. I can go to the port, main port. Mm -hmm. What do you like? Sometimes that thing cannot go. You must change it in the international level. Yeah, yeah. If you are not in a hurry, take 30, 40 days. Because it takes long way to go from the Yeah, they need to, place. exactly. Yeah, that's kind of them. Yeah. To be far away from the control and the supply of some kind of movement. Government of Russia give you contract, how much can sell it a year? 10,000, 10 million, give yeah. you, and you will can sell anywhere. So okay. you, that is money. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, 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 I understand. Slave mafia. Okay, we are the mafia. <laughs> you and me and... We are the same. <laughs> we are the same, yeah. Finally. I also need a picture with Mr. Dasubi yeah. Palehando. Alejandro, where you go? Yeah. So was the contract actually signed? They signed the contract. For how much? Uh, I think at that point, it was around 3.2 million US dollar. Can you? Oh, you will do it soon. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, not to be rude, but could I have uh, five minutes alone? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just take a sip and I walk out. You can bring it. You like it? Yeah. Ah, yeah. I bring my coffee. And, uh, I come back in five minutes. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So Ulrich leaves the room, but I'm still recording uh, the conversation. And then you can ensure that the government will not interfere. Here, Al Dasuki mentions a major Jordanian power broker, but due to legal reasons, his name cannot be disclosed. Next, the mole was asked to go to Sweden because a package was waiting for him to be picked up at the North Korean embassy in Stockholm. Hello, Ray. I'm here. How are you? I'm fine. The sun is so beautiful today. Yeah. I do. So Kang wrote oh, me. He sent this photo to check here. Thank you. Thank you. I went to the embassy in Stockholm mm -hmm. to pick up some drawings. What you see here is actually a North Korean design of how we can build our weapon slash pharmaceutical factory mm -hmm. in Uganda. Ah, okay. It looks great. I don't know. Outside it looks uh, resort, yeah. Exactly, hotel. and that's, that's that's why we need but to make it. But inside it looks so smart, you know. Yeah. It's like a from movie. Yeah. yeah. I might, you might saw a movie. <laughs> this is actually how it will look from above. Um, Golf course here? It could be, yeah, we could do. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. <laughs> what about the hotel uh, title? How I, how, what are you going to title? What title are you? Uh, I know that they're going to have some meetings with the investor about all those details now. Not, First, not something with smells typically. Exactly. Yeah. So... Uh, I hope it will be successful, yeah. I hope to. Just accept the uh, confidential. Confidential, yeah. of course, yeah. So... If something happens, our embassy does know nothing about it. Exactly. Thing. Staff of Mr. James. He will lead us to the room. Yeah. Then, in this tale of intrigue and deception, a new character made his appearance. It was Mr. Ju, a North Korean envoy who came to Copenhagen to do business with Mr. James. Last time the world met Mr. Ju was in the Australian version of 60 Minutes, where he acts as a smiling mouthpiece 
for the regime in Pyongyang. We were weak, but now we are strong. Single-hearted unity, a great leadership, and we have the ICBMs. So I usually say to Donald Trump, come, come, come to me. I will choke you with my H-bombs. Wow. I plan my trip to Denmark in order to expand the tourism market into Scandinavian countries. And uh, what is your connections to our collaboration partners? In, uh... I have a close friendship for, with Mr. Kang Long Kang for many years. Mr. Kang asked me to become a representative of the Nare Trade Company to sign the contract. So I have a document here. And also, he wants me to uh, work, as, uh, if necessary, or as the communicator between for this tourism project. In Uganda. Uh, in Uganda. Yes. The contract stipulates the triangle deal in print. Oil, purchased by Mr. Thames, goes to North Korea, and in return, North Korea sends products and technicians to the island in Uganda, where tourist goods will be made. <laughs> And here you go. Thank you, Edith. And you have my pen. <laughs> <laughs> Danish tradition. Danish tradition, actually, you have the whole sort of pen. But <laughs> and did Alejandro know about this deal as well? He was, he was well aware of it. Yeah. He was well aware of it. Skål! 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 Just do one try. Oh, exactly. Let's try this one. Now, the North Koreans would discover that Denmark also is a very alcoholized country. And score. All in one. Score. Look at him. No, no, no. You, you, you have to take it. Chim -chim. Chim -chim. <laughs> Chim -chim. <laughs> so we visit the, the little mermaid. Mm -hmm. But well, they were so drunk that I don't think they even remember. <laughs> Had Mr. James chosen to honor the contract he signed in Copenhagen, he would have to wire millions of dollars to Al Dasuki in Jordan as payment for oil to North Korea. In return, North Korea would deliver manpower and products to the island of Mr. James. And so goes the triangle trade. You can triangle, exactly. From his office in Jordan, Al Dasuki was now threatening legal action unless Mr. James honored their contract and showed him the money. Meanwhile, the North Korean weapons dealer, Mr. Danny, who we met in Uganda, was pushing for a meeting with Mr. James in order to speed up the business. They met in a hotel in Cambodia, where Mr. James was taken to the next level in the circle of trust. He gave me a new order list while I was down there. So, may I explain? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Meanwhile, the mole was taking care of business as the KFA delegate of Scandinavia. First, he went to London to protest against the BBC, together with his comrade in arms, the British delegate of the Korean Friendship Association, Mr. Dermot Hodgson. Hello, everybody. This is Ulrich and Dermot. We are at the BBC, which is the British... British Brainwashing Corporation. BBC. The BBC are continuing their lies about people's career. Then the mole went to Spain for his last in-person meeting with his president, Alejandro Cao de Pinos. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> you insist, I insist. Okay, okay. Several items were on the agenda. Dermot is British, and I have been in his home. So, frankly speaking, they British like tend this. to be quite dirty. Yeah. They, they love dirty, moldy, rusty things. It's like they love the it. old carpet on the floor. All, not all carpet, but he Dirt entered carpet. with the boots full yeah, of mud. Yeah. Mud in the house, yeah. you know? But most important was the sudden disappearance of Mr. James. It's difficult to trust people you don't know. Of course. And even people you know, like yes. James. Um, yes, yes. Oh, yes. yes, no, that really makes us lose a lot of money, a lot of time to you, to me, to Korea. I, I feel myself like a big idiot. I mean, am I the right guy in KFA now? Because I, I feel myself responsible for No, because happening. we know exactly who you are, yeah. and we know who is he. I have to uh, have some meetings always with this kind of rich man. And mm -hmm. I'm used to this kind of ex exception, people like Mr. Dasuki, who is a very rich man, very powerful, very influential, but very humble person. Mm -hmm. James is an opportunistic person who just mm -hmm. wants yeah. to get whatever and push out to everyone without recognizing the work. Mm -hmm. You have been loyal, even as a I servant, mean, more than loyal. loyal. Yeah. Frankly speaking, I didn't tell to you, yeah. but your way of treating him, and the way he was treating you, it was from servant to the Lord. Yeah. Put me a bloody Mary, what do you want, Alejandro? Yeah. Then servant, Mr. Yeah. Ulrich, of course, you are my comrade. I, I felt so bad, you know, yeah. when seeing you, but we are playing a game, so exactly. I have to accept I that. Was, I was also playing my games for him, for making Exa him, I know that, that he wants us and he wants I know that, we are playing, we are playing yeah, games. You know that you must have people that you can fully trust. Yeah. Because if only one goes to the CIA, only one, you are fucked forever. To top it off, the mole had been chosen as the host of the annual cafe meeting. All along as the puppet master, it was I who wrote the speeches for the mole. And now he would deliver his final sermon. Dear comrade, the KFA is at war, and we have every right to wage war against our enemies, because one person can change the outcome of history. But what about me, you might ask? What have you been doing as a KFA delegate for Scandinavia? I will here present you the tourist project. Well, here it is. Man, can you take this one down, please? As I had planned it, the mole would share the fruits of the tough secret work he had been doing with his mentor, Alejandro. Beautiful hotel with swimming pools and hotel rooms, meeting areas, a golf course. Of course, the mole would only use the coded phrases for methamphetamine and weapons, which Alejandro had taught him in the bunker yeah, in Spain. Yeah. When referring to something that you eat, yeah. It's a seafood, yeah. current seafood. Yeah. And when you are talking about the other thing, you can talking about, for example, let's talk about wood. Wood, uh, wood. wood. Handicraft. Wood handicraft, yeah. Made by hand, by the native people. Yeah. yeah. In those rooms here, it will be possible to produce organic seafood or woodal handicraft. Let's build a road up here, which will go up to an uh, airstrip, so we can fly out our products to sell in the world. You're welcome to come up and take pictures if you like. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. Following the annual cafe meeting, one member of the Korean Friendship Association 
praised the tourist project on the message board of the KFA. Alrando Cautabenas told the mole to delete everything at once. Also, a member named Jean Paul left the KFA because he panicked about spying and hacking. At the end of this, I hired the former intelligence officer, Annie Machon. Before she went rogue and became a whistleblower, she was working for the British security service, the MI5. Her exploits as a whistleblower has made her controversial, but that is of no concern to me. I am only interested in her qualifications as a spy. Running long-time undercover agents was her line of work, as was debriefing agents at the end of their missions. If someone has put 10 years of their life into doing something, and they've been very solitary in what they're doing, they do need a chance just to tell someone exactly what they went through. It's almost like a confessional. And of course, you do want to, to reward them at the end of it, even if it's just with a recognition they can't really tell anyone about, apart from perhaps their, their wife or their husband. But it is that recognition that's very important when they've been working undercover for so long. Such as a lavish dinner? A lavish dinner usually works very well, yes. And I want to raise a toast to you both for what you have achieved. Thank you. I think it's probably the um, most impressive private intelligence operation I've ever heard of. Uh, how are you going to protect these two guys from any reprisals from the North Koreans? Regarding Mr. James, he simply refuses to be, <laughs> you know, um, protected or advised about security. Okay. Um, we have prepared for an aftercare program for the mole, also taking care of his security. Mm -hmm. And his uh, family? And his family as well. Um, what I am more concerned about regarding the mole is that being the mole has been a part of his identity for more than 10 years, you know. So what will happen when we bring him in? Entering any form of secret type world is very seductive. I know from personal experience. And for those who have been living a, a double um, life with all the danger and the adrenaline rush and everything, it is incredibly difficult often to go back to mundane reality. In the long run, we all must face reality. So finally, I went to the suburbs of Copenhagen to see where the mole lives and meet with him and his wife. Ja, men Ulrik har noget, han gerne vil fortælle til dig. Ja, en rigtig lang historie. It is a long story, but let's cut to the ending. Så et eller så er jeg stolt af mig selv. Og håber du på en eller anden måde er lidt imponeret over det, jeg har prøvet at opnå, og det, jeg har prøvet at dokumentere for omverdenen. Jeg er bare rystet. Og jeg synes jo et eller andet sted, at du er en idiot, fordi du ikke har fortalt mig noget. Mm. Ja. Det er løgn på løgn. Jeg synes fandme, det er svært. Der er noget, jeg kan vil sige til Ulrik's forsvar. Det er, en, det er vigtigt at få med, og det er, at Ulrik er et af de modigste mennesker, jeg nogensinde har mødt. Øhm, sådan i hverdagen, så ser man ham jo ikke som modig, eller så tænker man jo bare, kan du lige komme i gang med rengøringen? Men, men, det, men det han har faktisk... jo trukket så meget for familien, ikke? Mere og mere og mere og mere, ikke? Altså, han forsvinder. Og nu er der gået til 11 år. Jeg ved ikke, om det... Ja. Jamen, det har været vanvittigt. Det har det jo nok. Det har været vanvittigt for mig. Også ikke at kunne fortælle dig. Det er også tit tænkt på, hvad tænker du, ikke? Øhm. Jeg har ikke tænkt så meget. Nej. Men jeg tænker mere, hvad der kommer til at ske nu, når det hele når vejen sinde. Og hvad det har af konsekvenser for 
os som familie. Du skal sidde der, ikke? Ja. Jeg sidder herovre. Yes. The only thing left was an even more difficult conversation. Mit hjerte banker. Er du sindssyg? Mm -hmm. Og den der. Hallo? Hallo Alejandro. I can't see you. Oh, start video. Okay. Hello? How are you? Yes, fine. And you? Well, I'm fine. So that's nice. Alejandro, before we get started, um, I have a few things I want to tell you. Yes. Um, first of all, why I've been so interested in North Korea. Mm -hmm. And also to find out the truth about you. Um, all our meetings together has actually been filmed. And I've been acting like a mole because I'm making a film with you. And I would really much like you to meet the instructor who's been helping me through this movie. So I hope you will ask, answer his questions. So please meet him here. Hello, Alano. Yeah. Yes, hello. We meet again. Yeah. We are recording this conversation and I should inform you that uh, uh, everything is on tape and we basically know everything. So this is uh, the end of a very long story. Alano, are you there? Han har afbrudt. Han har afbrudt. Han øh, satte hånden over, kunne jeg se, og, og, og fundet på en stopknap. Da han gik på skærmen, der, der var jeg næsten klar til at løbe på toilettet. Men da jeg fik åbnet munden, der, øh, der var jeg ligesom bare tilbage i... Hvis man kan sige, i mulvarperollen. Eller, man skal aldrig sige aldrig. Ulan. Det er godt. <laughs> Puh, ja. Og jeg, så kan vi se det igen? 